Um, here is the answers to the CPR quiz for week number eight. This is the second task for this week. Um, cool. So let me just open up the quiz so you can see it. Um, I'm not going to do a lot of writing or talking, hopefully, on this. Well, I can't write because I don't have a printer. Um, but I'll point out some things on the area biology marking schedule just so you can kind of get an idea of how kind of tricky it is um, when it comes to biology assessments. Um, so I've taken the 2018, let me fix that, uh, quiz question for you. Um, and in this case here, it's just focus on the meiosis and really wanting to focus on how that variation occurs. So if you remember in this week's lesson, we were talking about independent assortment, crossing over, random fertilization, that sort of stuff. So this is just a question asking you about this material. Um, I often see this material integrated into the dye hybrid classes and explaining linked and unlinked genes, which we'll cover uh, in the next week when we start the dye hybrid crosses. Um, but this is good preparation for it. Um, not a whole lot here when it comes to what they're asking for in the question. They're just asking about the increased genetic variation and how in meiosis, how does that start? This is actually a really easy generic question because it's not tied to anything in particular. They just want you to explain meiosis and how it um, creates variation. Be mindful with all these bullet points here to use them. Um, each one of those bullet points is basically a, what they're looking for on the exam. They're, they're going to tie into the marking schedule directly and uh, you want to be able to hit all those bullet points. So like not only, you know, description of homologous chromosomes and explanation of homologous chromosomes and the process of crossing over, but also tick it off for independent assortment and segregation. Um, and then that discussion bit about, you know, why are homologous chromosomes found in parent cells as diploids, but in daughter cells as haploids. Uh, so again, looking at that theory, I'm going to click now on the NCA answer schedule. We're looking at B, and this is a good example to why biology is a lot harder uh, to mark than chemistry. Chemistry is really clear cut. In this case, biology gives you a whole paragraph. Um, and to be fair, biology is longer when it comes to the writing style because there's explanations and integrations of different ideas together. Um, but you get this whole big paragraph as a teacher and then you've given lots of bullet points to say, okay, these are ways you can find credit and answers. The good news is though, is that there's so many. Um, so if you looked at the first half of the question, all these points here are achieved, which is really frustrating because basically everything rides on your answer for D. There's nothing else to that question number one. I haven't given you the beginning part of question one because those are the dihybrid crosses, which we haven't covered yet. But you can see they only have given you achieved points for those. Um, the good news is when you look at the total number of achieved points they've given you, they've given one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven opportunities to get achieved points. You only needed four to get an A4. You only need three to get an A3. So you can actually miss most of those achieved points and you can still pass, which is crazy when it comes to biology. Uh, chemistry is not usually that generous with giving you opportunities. Let's look at the excellent, or sorry, let's look at the merit. So we knew above there's no merit points. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, six potential merit points. And when it comes to how they're divvying up the merit and excellence, well, you only need two merit points for the M5 and three merit points for the M6. So like I said, very generous. So, so long as you know what you're doing and you read the question and you're hitting all the bullet points, you have lots of opportunities to get uh, those points. And then the last one here, three excellence points and again they only needed one excellence point for the e7 and two for the e8 so again that's pretty generous of them so lots of opportunities and that's why i really want to stress with the biology assessments these biology externals use those bullet points tick off everything they have on the list of that bullet point as well so you can get all your marks with the marking schedule, I won't go over into too much detail because you can read this and I uh, have taught this in the other video lessons. My main thing today is just to give you hints 
and exam advice. Achieve level stuff tends to be definitions. So if you can write down definitions or a description for all the various words they've used in the question, um, like homologous chromosomes, crossing over, independent assortment, segregation, there, those would give you achieve points. The merit level points are the explanation. So it's taking you one step further and actually explaining to me what crossing over is, what is the purpose of it. That's how you extend it to me. Um, and you can see here that there's multiple kind of points on, you know, explain that crossing over results in gametes with different combinations of alleles from each parent, that it unlinks genes that would have been inherited together, that sort of stuff. So explanation is what you are getting for the merit. The difference between a merit level answer and excellence level answer is quite tricky and I find it's quite hard sometimes because students will waffle and repeat themselves to try to cover up the fact that they may not know something. We can see through that. Um, it's time consuming but we can take our time and look through it and ask ourselves, does this kid actually really know what they're talking about? And the main thing we're looking for is that, and you can see it multiple times here, thorough discussion or just discussion in multiple points. And what we're trying to see here is can you integrate the various bits of information and see how they link together? Um, so do keep that in mind for the, um, the excellence level. Um, Oh, so wordle. <laughs> uh, when you are trying to aim for that excellence level, I highly suggest with biology because there is. <laughs> Danielle's very upset she's not finished wordle. Uh, with biology, um, there is that risk of waffling and repeating yourself and not actually answering your question well. So I would suggest if you're aiming for excellence for biology, before you write these long answer essay questions, you draft your essay and you organize it on a piece of scrap paper or on that paper on the back of the book. Um, so that way you have a very clean and distinctive answer. So that way when the marker comes and reads it, they can easily see you know all of it. Because if you're gonna waffle, markers are in a rush. They spend about two to three minutes per exam paper. And if they can't quickly tell, and they're kind of like, mm, I have a bad feeling they're just kind of waffling and they don't and they're trying to hide the fact they don't know what they're saying. They will mark you down to a merit. So make sure your answers are very clean and concise. And one of the ways you can do that is create yourself a um, a what should I call it? An, an outline for your essay. Um, different questions, different problems. Um, but I find quite commonly you see it happens again. Um, biology is quite like that, so it doesn't have the same distinctive, nice um, marking as a biology or physics. So I hope that helps.